Hi guys and welcome back to Is It Worth It Reviews. Today we are going to talk about the flagship moon drop uh, in-ear model called Dark Saber. It has the price that matches that flagship status and today I'm going to try and explain how does it uh, sound and is it worth its price. And to start with some basic info about Dark Saber, uh, these are over the ear, uh, quite chunky in ears, and uh, they are made out of plastic. But the faceplate is made out of some material that resembles a stone, uh, at least to the touch. And there is a little bit sharper edges here, but not too sharp or anything to be worried about. But it definitely looks cool, like some sort of stone when you touch it. Uh, the rest of the housing, as I said, is made out of plastic and this plastic is not as thick as on some other models at this price point. But I think that is a deliberate decision because they didn't want to make these too chunky. And the reason uh, for that is because inside we have several multiple uh, balanced armature drivers, but, but also dynamic drivers that were not included in some previous Moondrop flagships. But many users of these previous Moondrops expressed that they would like to have a bit more bass oomph. And so Moondrop decided to use dynamic drivers here to emphasize the bass line more. But we'll talk about the sound uh, bass line included just a little bit later. For now, I wanted to mention that these are quite decently sensitive in-ears and you can drive them with your normal portable gear, it uh, doesn't have to be some sort of powerhouse. The cable of course is detachable and this one feels looks to be of a really nice quality. It doesn't tangle, it's not microphonic uh, that much. And at the end here, you can see at this moment I'm using 3.5 millimeters single-ended connector. But the cable itself is balanced uh, connection capable. You just need to unscrew this part here and then remove the 3.5 millimeters and you can insert instead 4.4 Pentacon balanced connector. I leave it uh, down here for the moment and go back to this single-ended one. And once they are connected, you secure them in place by using this screw-on cap. I think this is a pretty nice and elegant solution. It feels sturdy, it feels secure in place. And I like the idea of having a choice of different connectivity just by changing the connector and not the whole cable itself. Aside from that, you do get some additional goodies in the box, like uh, plenty ear tips and a carrying case that I think it's the real leather this time. Uh, it smells like real leather uh, and it probably is at this price point, but I'm pretty sure that somebody is doing unboxing on the web, so I don't need to go through this part. Uh, instead, I'm going to focus on how does Dark Saber actually sound. In the in-ear community, there is quite a bit uh, of obsession with different tuning curves. And in the back of the box, you can see that uh, there is like, I think this is a very standard Harman curve is aimed. And for the most part, it is uh, tracked really nicely with some added uh, bass oomph in the bottom. And that would made you to expect a very bassy sound from these in-ears. But in reality, it doesn't feel like that really. Because a graph is just that, a graph. And our perception of the sound and its tonality is not as easily represented with only one curve. But let me explain what can you expect to hear if you buy Darksaber. So this uh, in-ear truly does have a quite weighty and uh, heavy bass line. But that goes for true bass, deep bass, as some would call it, sub bass. And if you're listening to the music that really has this really deep bass notes around 50 hertz or something like that, you'll notice that very a full, weighty and present bass line in these uh, in-ears. They definitely have some oomph and you can feel that bass. 
But the thing is that as soon as we started going up the frequency spectrum uh, into a upper bass, mid bass region, the bass is not, that part of the bass is not prominent at all. If anything, it's very tight, very neat and controlled. There is not much warmth or any emphasis to talk about in that mid bass region. And because of that, many tones and instruments that do sound bassy, but uh, they do not have that l really low mid bass, can actually sound very controlled and even a little bit constrained from time to time. And that same kind of impression continues when we talk about the mid-range, so that a lower mid-range that is often influenced by that upper bass region is really toned down and uh, more on the neat, clean, controlling side than it is uh, anything that you could call full, bold or juicy. You just wouldn't use these adjectives to describe the sound of the dark saber, upper bass and lower mid-range section. And then we have this Harman curve that says upper mid-range and lower highs need to peak a little bit because we want that sensation of resolution and presence and great detailing and they did that with these in-ears. And the overall sensation of just clarity and crispiness is fantastic. Any sort of tone texture and uh, any sort of crispy, crunchy detailing in the song, if it's in the recording, you'll hear it. Highs are well extended, once again, very crispy, clean, clear, and very focused. Uh, the highs are not particularly widespread and airy and uh, they're not glowing uh, like making a very lit sound stage but they are crisp focused and just high resolution i would say and all of this makes for a sound uh, that has quite good uh, a layering and separation of tones vocals feel a little bit um, pulled away from you, from your head, and many other instruments too, because that lower mid-range, that bold, juicy part is a little bit retracted, is on a leaner side, you never feel that uh, tones are big, bold and in your heads. They're a little bit further away from you, a little bit leaner. But the sensation of clarity and empty space around the tone and separation between them is great actually. And if you're hunting for details and uh, just clarity and crispiness, I do believe that you would be impressed with this. But if you're looking for some natural, full, rich tone timbre and rich harmonic overtones, that's not something that Dark Saber is doing all that well. Which actually leads me uh, to one comparison with Moondrop Blessing 3 here, which is half the price of Dark Saber. And when you compare them directly, you do notice immediately that Dark Saber uh, digs out more tiny details, more resolution, and more tone texture from the recording. And uh, you are just aware that uh, Dark Saber is technically more accomplished model. Blessing 3, that I, by the way, really, really liked when I initially reviewed them, they do have great detailed retrieval on their own, but uh, directly comparing them to Dark Saber shows that they are a little bit blurrier and a little bit muddier in the bass and mid bass section, and they do not separate and layer as well as Dark Saber. Dark Saber, true to their name, has that knife blade sharpness and precision with how they separate things. So I guess that Saber is uh, a good name, it's a telling name for them. But the thing is that if you listen to the music longer uh, and you do not compare anything directly, I have the feeling that Blessing 3 actually has more correct tonal balance and tone timbre. For example, acoustic instruments 
have more of that chambery uh, resonance and and uh, full bodiness and vocals have a more neutral balance with more chestiness with dark saber uh, especially female vocals will sound less chesty and less palpable than I would like. And they will have a little bit more of that upper frequency spice that can lead to sibilance with some recordings. And for me personally, if I want to fully enjoy some more naturally recorded acoustic songs like beautiful jazz vocals, etc., I uh, uh, needed a little bit of EQing with Dark Saber to add a bit of that juiciness and mid-range fullness that I'm lacking. And that leads me to some pairing suggestions. I would simply avoid anything, any source, DAC or AMP, that is described as sounding lean, analytical, focused or sharp. Anything like topping the X3 Pro Plus, for example, paired with Dark Saber would make my ears bleed, and I just wouldn't recommend that. On the other hand, something like Chord Mojo 2, for example, uh, which has really nice, soft, warm sound to it, and especially rich tone timbre, especially in the mid range is very nicely complementing Dark Sabers. What's even better, Mojo 2 has integrated EQ that is not negatively influencing sound fidelity like many software-based EQs uh, are doing. And even if we are not talking about that EQ, as I said, uh, the overall tonality, that rich tone timbre and that harmonic richness of Chord Mojo 2 is complementing Dark Saber really nicely. And that would basically be all for today's reviews. With Dark Saber, we are talking about a flagship grade kind of sound from the Moon Drop, but the sound that uh, has strong bass line but kind of leaner and more crisp, sharp, focused, controlled, a little bit analytical sound in the upper frequencies. Some may really like that kind of sound signature, but I gave you my own suggestions uh, about pairing how to uh, counter that sort of tonality in a positive way with your source. And with that, I hope you like this video. Stay tuned, see you next time. Bye.